we can see some fairly tiny things with our eyes. Examples are ants and hair. We struggle to see slightly smaller objects like red blood cells. Many of these pollen grains are also slightly smaller than what our eyes can detect. This pinhead is over one millimeter in diameter and is something we can easily see. Closer inspection of the pinhead using a microscope reveals flaws in its manufacture. Here is a ridge at the side of the pinhead. As we start zooming in to a level smaller than what we can see with our eyes, we see a white patch on the pinhead. These patches of white are actually bacterial cells. The cells are about one micrometer in length, or one millionth of a meter. Since the pinhead was about one millimeter in diameter, and the cells are about one micrometer long, the bacteria are about 1,000 times smaller than the pinhead they inhabit. Zooming into the inside of the cell, we can see objects measured in nanometers, or one billionth of a meter. These are magnetic nanoparticles within the cell. Each particle is composed of iron and is about 50 nanometers long. Zooming closer, we can see the nanoparticles in greater detail, even the individual atoms of iron. Material scientists manipulate molecules and crystals at the nanoscale or over extremely short distances. These distances are measured in nanometers, or one billionth of a meter. The properties of the objects around us depend on what's happening at the nanoscale. The micro and nanoscale features of horsefly wings contribute to the fly's incredible flying ability. The micro and nanoscale features of moth wings make them nearly invisible to bat sonar. The valley or canyon you see in the background picture here is the gap between two tracks of polymer. This is a prototype polymer solar cell. The canyon is about the width of a human hair. Carbon is one of the most common elements on Earth. In 1980, we knew of two forms of pure carbon, diamond and graphite. Both are made of only carbon, and yet they are so different in appearance and function. Like all of the materials around us, the properties of diamond and graphite arise at the nanoscale, where carbon atoms are arranged differently. The arrangement of atoms in a material equals the material's properties. Because the carbon in diamond is bonded to four other carbon atoms in a three-dimensional way, the resulting material is very hard. Diamonds are sometimes used in saw blades and drill bits to cut and grind other materials. Graphite is used in pencils. Your pencil lead is not really lead, it is graphite. Because each carbon atom is bonded to only three other carbons in the same plane, forming flat sheets, the resulting material is soft and leaves a mark on paper. The bonds between each sheet are weak and easily break. The marks on paper are the flat sheets of carbon. The hardness and clarity of diamond is a result of each carbon bonding covalently to four other carbons. In graphite, each carbon forms a covalent bond with only three other carbons. The loose coupling between sheets makes it very easy to break off entire sheets of carbon. Another form of pure carbon containing 60 carbon atoms was discovered in 1986 by Robert Curl, Harold Croto, and Richard Smalley. This discovery earned them the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1996. These scientists were studying forms of carbon in red giants, old, low-temperature stars. 
Blasting graphite with a laser, they found molecules composed entirely of carbon and with exactly 60 carbon atoms or carbon-60. The use of hexagons and pentagons in a structure to create curved surfaces is very similar to buildings designed by the architect and inventor Buckminster Fuller. All spherical and tube-shaped pure carbon molecules are named fullerenes in his honor. Often they are called buckyballs. Because each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbons within the 60 atom molecule, carbon-60 can dissolve and form solutions. This is very unlike diamond or graphite. The purple solution contains individual buckyball molecules. Fullerenes may play a central role in a new technology to help us solve our future energy problems. A promising application of fullerenes is in plastic solar cell technology. The materials in a solar cell absorb photons from the sun and excite the electrons and materials within the solar cell. These excited electrons are then harvested in the form of electricity. Fullerenes can also conduct electricity and are used in plastic solar cell technology. Carbon nanotubes are fullerenes just like buckyballs, except nanotubes are cylinders and not spheres. Carbon nanotubes are very strong. Current applications include tennis rackets and bicycle parts. Advances in bundled nanotube technology will make other materials lighter and stronger as well. Other technologies based on the properties of fullerenes are being developed in medicine, energy, and engineering. 